Hello! So, as we are getting into June, Junicorn is starting. It's uh, like Mermaid or some of the other art drawing prompts, but you're supposed to draw unicorns for the whole month of June. I did not want to stick with a particular prompt list uh, myself, so what I actually did is I went through and arranged a bunch of beautifully brightly colored bits of cardstock. Each color kind of connects to a theme. Uh, white is mammals, orange is prehistoric creatures, etc, etc. And I decided to use these for my inspiration. First two that I pulled uh, are a pale green color and those were both insects. So I went ahead and pulled a third one uh, purposely as an insect so I can do kind of a theme. And they didn't record that one. But what I have for this theme is a stick bug, a walking stick. Um, then I pull pipe vine swallowtail caterpillar. And the third one that I pulled, which is not visible, is a thorn bug. So starting into the designs for these things. I originally had a lot of trouble getting horse anatomy down for the, the first one. Uh, this one actually took me the longest to design out of all of them. I am not super practiced in equine anatomy and unglets. Like, I know how they work for the most part, but getting the, the details down about how the muscles fit on the shoulders, the neck, and the hips really was throwing me for a loop, so I closely referenced a picture um, before I started bugifying it. Uh, I had a lot of fun with the walking stick. Uh, they were, some of them had really interesting colors, and it was just fun kind of making it look really, really alien. Um, some walking sticks also had the, the weird eyes that uh, praying mantises have, where it's an orb with color and like a black dot, which I find frickin' adorable. So I created this creature, made him really colorful, and talking with my best friend, decided that they should be really small um, for unicorns. They're, they're cat-sized, which, which amuses me greatly. Um, as I got more into drawing these, and you'll see at the end I do a complete illustration with all three of these unicorns, I feel almost like there's a, a Pokemon-esque unicorn world, especially because specifically these are all bug unicorns. So here is the complete uh, walking stick, the, the complete walking stick insect unicorn. Obnoxiously bright and colorful, but I appreciate it greatly. So next I was getting into the swallowtail uh, butterfly caterpillar horse <laughs> unicorn. Um, I know I wanted it to have lots of legs and be kind of Shetland pony y. I couldn't decide if I wanted it to have uh, caterpillar legs or horse legs, um, so I went with really stubby little horse legs. Um, longer ones in the front and shorter ones in the back, like the caterpillar. It did wind up with uh, six legs, which I think is less than what the actual caterpillar has. If you look at the caterpillar, it's got this kind of mask shape on its head, uh, which is kind of where the tube mask comes from, which looks weird without the context when I think about it separately. I wish I had mixed some more of that into the design, because it looks like it's just kind of like got an inner tube on its face, but at the same time I really like it. It's got the big antenna ears, and uh, one of the, the spikes is the horn, so it's got like a stubby little spike. I shifted the colors around on this guy several times because I wasn't quite happy with it. I wanted it to be a little more natural, a little less obnoxious colored paired with the walking stick. It's my second one, and I felt like if I had too many obnoxious colors, it would be too much. But all in all, I'm really happy with this dude. He's cute, he's chubby, and I really had a specific idea of how big this thing was going to be, kind of like a big fat corgi dog-sized creature. I'm just fat, like chubby and cute. Last but not least, we have the thorn bug, which is a creature I had never really thought about before, known about, looked at, um, and it's actually really oddly pretty. Uh, the colors are really cool, the shape of the body, and just how the uh, armor 
fits on the rest of the, the body is really neat. Horse kind of anatomy or combine them was a little odd. Um, I wound up with a six-legged horse again, but it's an insect theme. I think that's totally okay. They had wings too, which is neat because they kind of disappear into the body. You can't even see the wings because of how well they fit with the rest of the exoskeleton. The, the first pass I made on this guy, he only had one flat horn. I added a second horn because I felt like it might be a little hard to say it was a unicorn. But what's funny is when I went and drew the illustration version later, I forgot I had added that. So I guess in my mind of this creation, uh, it didn't have that horn because it didn't appear. Coloring this guy was really fun because he's just got so many beautiful colors and he's got so many more patterns compared to the other unicorns in this. I kind of wish I had uh, done a couple more patterns on the other ones, but also it's kind of what makes him unique. I imagine wasn't quite as small as the other bug critters. I mean, he's still mostly horse-sized, like a, a medium-sized horse to a small horse um, standing, but he's so stocky. Uh, also with that shell, it's like not anyone's going to be able to ride him. Um, doing some uh, zebra stripes on him was really fun too. Plus he's got a fat little bug butt. Can't really see it well here because his, his uh, wings are covering it, but in the illustration you can. And those are the three designs of my bugacorns. Uh, then I sat down to do the actual illustration. Here's the illustration, we're kind of jumping in. I decided to have a human in here for scale. It's a girl and she's gonna be holding uh, the fat bug of corn. So you get to see his cute little chubby belly and legs and all of that. And I drew the other unicorns kind of around her. Trying to figure out how to fit them all in the page was a little bit of a stretch. Um, I decided to have the uh, thorn bug kind of half sitting, half standing adorably behind her. Uh, she's cradling the, the caterpillar and then have the stick bug. I went ahead and put in two because it filled in the space plus they're just so cute and tiny and playful and adorable. Um, I had to look up various references to try to get how to draw the chest of the thorn bug and the neck shoulder areas of the stick bug, especially uh, playful leg movements was a little bit of a difficulty. Going in with the colors, I was trying to stick as close as I could to the designs I had, but there were some colors that were a little more difficult to do, and I also wanted to mute things down a little bit in general, just so that way there would be a sense of cohesiveness. Um, I used a lot of the same yellows and similar greens throughout, and I didn't do a whole lot of color mixing uh, versus what was on my palette already because I wanted all the creatures to really be in the same world, and if you look at the digital illustrations, they don't really go together all that well. Doing the, the thorn bug shell took several passes, because you had to do the yellows, and then the reds, and then the mint green, and then the darker greens, and um, building up all of those patterns took a while, whereas a lot of the other critters didn't have so many patterns, so they just kind of put the color down and they were good. The stick bugs kind of got a lot of muting done on their colors, um, just because of simplicity and, and getting that bright vibrancy um, would have taken a lot of attention, and I didn't want to push so much attention towards them because the, the girl is kind of the centerpiece of this, and she, I mean, I don't know who she is, she's a girl. Um, but she really brings scale and life to the, the creatures around her. Uh, after doing a flat wash of color on everybody, I'm adding in the patterns. 
I actually got my watercolor pencils out and with my uh, favorite magenta, <laughs> with my favorite color, magenta, I went in and did kind of a, a basic pass um, of adding value to the drawing uh, with the watercolor pencil. I went through and uh, colored in where I wanted my shadows to be, and then I went through and, and wet it with a brush and moved it around and blended it more how I wanted it. I could have done shading with the basic coloring, but there were so many colors that I was pushing to try to get right. I was nervous to do too much value with the watercolor itself because there was so much going on and I really just wanted to get it all on the page. If I'd taken my time, I probably could have done it. Um, but this, this was probably one of the more intense traditional illustrations I've done in a long time. After the passes with magenta, I put in a little bit of other colors to push some value. I put a little bit of blue shading in her hair, a little bit of green here and there, a little bit of yellow just to add a little bit more variety and tone and brighten up some areas. I went through first with a white gel pen to add contrast between the, the different characters, um, but it was giving me trouble, so I got out my trusty white ink um, to get kind of a, a broader and more crisp uh, difference between the characters. Um, plus it's a lot faster. I find working with calligraphy pens and uh, paint brushes just considerably faster than working with gel pens and things like that. Then I went through with a couple of my favorite Copic markers. They're, they're kind of like pastel shades, but I really like them because you can just add the tiniest hint of some variation of color uh, to an illustration without entirely changing the color underneath. You can just do a little bit of blue here, a little bit of green there, and it, it brings a little bit more life to an illustration. Um, and then I got a liner and just went back through adding some darker lines and refining some outlines um, just to show some more depth. So it's a, at this point a pretty flat drawing um, and redraw some of the lines that the, the white ink had uh, gone over because I do not have a steady hand. All in all, I am really satisfied with this illustration. I think it's adorable. I think it's really fun. I could have come up with a little bit better of design for the girl in the middle and the middle of the illustration, her lap area, is a little muddled and confusing. Um, but in general, I really like this illustration. I think it really sets the mood I was going for and honestly, these guys are cute. I When I did the initial uh, designs for them, I was a little worried because I enjoyed them, but I wanted other people to kind of see what I saw when I looked at these critters and this is why I decided to do an illustration like this and this is why I decided to put a girl in the middle of the whole situation because I wanted people to see the action and the, the personalities of the creatures I had drawn that I was imagining but had not really come through in the design artwork. I hope you enjoyed uh, <laughs> this video. Um, it may be a little long uh, going through design process as well as the illustration process. Um, I do want to do this at least one more time uh, in the month of June with unicorns because I am having a lot of fun with this. It really depends on the amount of time I have, but I'd love to do this like one or two more times and focus specifically on another type that I've got on my bucket over here. I know I really want to do uh, prehistoric unicorns. Um, I also have uh, different uh, settings and other types of choices and even one of the options is like objects and that would be really fun to explore. Um, but for now, here you go, random redhead girl with bug unicorns. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye!